Hi everyone, it's Pamela Nuri here in the Indian Ocean, Head of Expedition Operations at Naval Caledonia and we have with us here Dr. Ryan Daly. Uh, Ryan works in shark conservation and research and we're going to ask him a few questions about how this is all conducted. Now you're probably familiar with birds that get satellite tagged and you see these amazing migrations right from the northern Siberia coast down to southern Africa and uh, we often see images like that of um, birds and other species that travel these great distances but we're using in those cases satellite tags and this is because they're in the air so it's pretty easy but when it comes to species such as sharks um, which are of huge conservation concern and they're not coming up to the air to breathe then you can't really always use satellite tags to too much use so um, Ryan's going to tell us a bit about how that works with underwater tracking of animals that might move great distances through the oceans hello Hi, thanks oh, Pam. Tell us what you do. Yeah, so as you mentioned, we can't rely on satellite telemetry because it requires an animal to be at the surface of the ocean. So for many sharks that don't come to the surface, we have to rely on underwater acoustic telemetry. Essentially this works by sound transmitting devices that transmit a uniquely coded uh, signal. And uh, this is an example of a tag uh, that transmits the signal and, and these tags can be fitted either on the outside of the animal or we conduct a surgery and put it on the inside of the animal and uh, several advantages to this sort of technology uh, one being it lasts a long time so we're able to track these animals for up to 10 years using these tags um, so it gives us a really good look into the lives of these animals year after year and we're able to track them as they grow uh, possibly mature and change their behavior over time but the challenge, obviously, is that we need something under order to record the sound that these tags make. Wait, so tell us, how do you actually get that into the shark? That sounds interesting. Yeah, so uh, after, I've been doing this for over a decade, but what we've learned is it's worth uh, implanting these tags internally into the animal because the, the animal heals quickly and it'll have a longer uh, lifespan. So to do that, we have to catch the shark first and then we essentially conduct a small surgery, make a, an incision of about two centimeters, pop this tag in. It's specifically designed to be implanted internally. It's got smooth edges and we sterilize it before we put it in and stitch it up. And the shark um, heals in a matter of weeks and this will transmit from inside of the shark's cavity. Okay, interesting. So, um, and then I know you are responsible for the receiving session. So tell us about the receiving of all these things. Yeah, so this is an example of a underwater receiver which picks up the code that this transmits. Uh, it's very simple really, it's just mainly a battery and then a hydrophone up here. This hydrophone is what listens to the ping that this tag transmits and its range is approximately 500 meters plus or minus a few hundred meters depending on the environment. So because it transmits via sound, things like noisy reefs, current, wind noise would uh, interact with this signal and you may get a reduced range. But essentially the idea is for this to log uh, on its memory the unique tag ID of this tag. And these tags can transmit between 30 seconds and a minute and a half uh, interval. And so depending on what you're trying to achieve from your study, you set the tag up how you want it and then you will download this about every year because the battery lasts every, uh, about a year. And so every year you go down to the bottom of the ocean, retrieve this, which is easier to then done because uh, the ocean is rough, rough on equipment and we do lose them from time to time, but we make sure that our moorings are uh, strong and we maintain and service them as needed. But it's kind of like Christmas every year when you go and you get this receiver mm -hmm. back and you get to download it and see what's been pinging in on, on your receiver. Yes. It's quite amazing to think this tiny little thing could last for 10 years, pinging every 30 seconds to a minute and a half. Hey? That's incredible. So um, in order to be effective, obviously you can't just have one of these in each ocean. Um, I know you're responsible for a lot around South Africa and Mozambique. How many are there and then globally, uh, how do you connect all the dots? Yeah, absolutely. So regionally, we have a big network in South Africa along the coast that is maintained by several partners. Uh, we're responsible for about 50 or so receivers along our coast here and then we link in with others along the coast and there are a few hundred receivers along our coast, uh, mainly coastal. And then spanning into Mozambique, 
we connect with researchers there, but it really is a team effort that's coordinated at the moment in South Africa by uh, an a organization called the Acoustic Tracking Array Platform. But then this links into a global network. Um, Australia's got their own called AMOS, uh, Europe's got theirs, America's got theirs, and in each of these countries, uh, we're using the same technology. Uh, this is a Canadian company that makes this equipment, and we share data amongst ourselves and collect the data in the same way so that's compatible. And if you tag animal, I make sure it can be detected on my receiver. Okay, so your shark that you tag swims over to Australia, the Australian guys yes. tell you, Ryan, we picked up your shark over here. Yeah. And likewise, when you download this, you could pick up animals yeah. that come from anywhere in the world and you'll just tell yeah. the respective scientists about the, about the data. Yeah, we've had some amazing migrations across the Indian Ocean. Um, we've connected with French researchers and most of Ethan researchers that have tagged animals you never expected to, to find here, so absolutely. Yeah, but it's so interesting and important because it's all very well if we have a protected species in South Africa, um, but if it's not protected across the border or in other countries, it's sort of, um, you know, defeats the object. So this science-based evidence in order to promote conservation of these wide-ranging species is so important. How many sharks do you think you've actually tagged now? Probably around 150 to 200 sharks. And yeah, good points about the sort of interconnectedness between countries. We, in fact, maintain a receiver array at the border between South Africa and Mozambique. And the purpose of that project is really to look at trans border movements between the two countries, essentially showing that, you know, we have the same population of animals crossing the border on potentially a day to day basis. But we needed evidence to show, you know, that these animals share habitat between the two countries to, to promote collaboration between countries in terms of regulations and enforcement of the same conservation-based uh, mm. management sort of laws. Yeah, and being at the border, I mean, do they also have to have their passport stamped? Uh, yeah, we, we check, we check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, we actually uh, got some videos that I'm going to share with you next about uh, some of the installing of these little <laughs> tags into the sharks, which is quite interesting and then of these receivers sitting out there in the ocean. But one last question, um, any exciting or strange data that you've uh, retrieved out of all this research? I know uh, Ryan mainly works with bull sharks and zambies, but anything in particular that comes to mind? Well, I think, yeah, what's been interesting is to just to look at the vast distances some sharks have traveled. We've had tiger sharks cross almost to Indonesia from South Africa. Wow. Um, and, and again, we sometimes use a mix of satellites tags and these tags but I think the most fascinating is how some sharks specifically the bull sharks have come back to the same site year after year sometimes on exactly the same day of the year year after year they're in exactly the same place and how they get this right without calendar and a watch I don't know but just that repetitive behavior these sort of creatures of habit has been absolutely mind-blowing yeah that really is well thank you so much it's been uh, really interesting and we'll share some little video clips next thanks guys Bye. <laughs>